Lee, we're back in Germany. You've invited us to Much and Glad back. Now, this used to be the Doris and Sharman factories in 1884 and 1885. But tell me about the involvement of the company. Well, this has always been the Sharman factory. And Sharman, as you say, was, was 19, 1885. In 1996, Doris and Sharman became one company. This facility is about 30,000 square metres, as you say. It's a large facility with, with eight build halls. And what type of machines are you building here, Lee? There's, there's three main machine types here. Um, and, and, and the names that people are synonymous with are Dorries, where we make large VTLs, the Sharman, where we make large horizontal uh, boring machines and, and large milling machines for, um, for titanium. And also there's Ecospeed, which of course we've spoken about before for very, very high volumetric metal removal of aluminium for the aerospace industry. And, and where we're standing here, this is the start of the process. This is where you uniquely build the heads for the customers and the spindles. Well, that's right. Just behind us here, you can see uh, two uh, Ecospeed head units. It's the Z3 head unit, which is unique to, to Sharman. And then further down the shop, we build um, headstocks and units for other machines, such as the DBF, which is a U-axis head that's, that's famous in the oil and gas industry and also different types of heads for the, for the Sharman Ecoforce machine, which we'll, which we'll touch on later. And that's the sort of philosophy that you've got at Starag, isn't it? Because you invited me over to Droop and Ryan, and what makes you very distinctly different is that you're building heads for customers, and, and that's where the process starts, isn't it? We always start with a customer, we always start with a, with a component, and then from that component we build the process. And as you rightly point out, quite often that involves a number of different heads and we have to reach a number of inaccessible areas in some cases in a single setup. So it's all about giving the customer a solution that's the minimum number of setups and the fastest process time. So we're going to take a walk around the factory now and look at all the other elements of the actual machine build. Sounds good. Shall we go? So Lee. We've just come from the area where you're assembling the heads, but this area here, what are you actually doing? Well, this is the test area, Mark. So once the assembled heads are completed, they come in here and they go through a reliability test where we run them for at least 24 hours just to check that all the moving parts are working okay prior to the spindle being assembled. When you're actually testing the head, why is it so crucial to test it? Because we have to guarantee the reliability. So we run these for 24 hours as a minimum the heads are all linked to a number of sensors and we make sure that we've got reliability before they're then built into the machine itself and of course before they ship to the customer. And does that sort of guarantee that everything would be in the right place at the right time for, for the build of the machine? It does and it also means that if, if something's going to break, it breaks straight away. So because we've run it through a rigorous test at the plant, we know that as soon as it goes into production at the customer, they just run and run and run mark. And I, I know some machine tool manufacturers, they, they source heads from elsewhere, but this gives you complete control of the actual manufacturing process. Everything's made in-house, designed in-house, made in-house and tested in-house. We've spoken about how you're manufacturing the spindles and the spindle line from earlier on, but here you've got retrofitted machines, rebuilt machines for your own process to make heads for the customers. Well, it's a great way to demonstrate the ability and the accuracy and reliability of our own retrofit machines. So what we do is we manufacture our own headstocks on site here using a combination of retrofitted machines as you've just seen and then brand new super accurate machines in, in temperature control zones such as the machine behind us. So this it gives us confidence that when we talk to people about retrofit machines we can bring them over here and demonstrate the quality of, of a retrofit and, and that negates the need for them to always buy a new machine they can retrofit an old machine which is about 60 to 70 percent of the cost of new. So is it more cost effective to actually have that process in-house rather than actually sub out to third party? Well it, it is cost effective of course but it also gives us control of the process and control of the quality of these products. The headstock is, is a very important part of the machine. So Lee, this is the next stage of the process after the, the head manufacturing, you know, is, what's this? Is this the start of the assembly? Well, the, the first bay heads, the second bay, we start to, to build the sub-assembly. So we, we stood next to one of a number of different tool holding options. So there's carousels, there's the Vero system, there's, there's a tower system that we offer and other systems depending on the machine. But within, within this facility, we, we support the whole 
range of products. So, so we, we, we can be building a number of different products at any different time. So you've got uh, tables being built here. Are they for just the machines that you're building in this facility or are the portfolio within the SARAG? No, they vary. This, this table behind me, Mark, is for Bertier. So this is destined for France for final assembly. And this table to the, uh, to the left of me now could be either for a Charmin or for a Hecate machine. And it's a high-speed table for, for turning as well as milling operations. And so why are you building them for other parts of the business then rather than just the machines that you build in Munch and Gladbach? So, so it gives us a core competence here and it gives us the flexibility to manufacture a number of different products for a number of different machine types under one roof with a high level of expertise. It gives us flexibility, it gives us control of cost and it gives us control of the inventory as well. Lee, so we've looked at the uh, head manufacturing here, we've also looked at the sub-assembly, but to me it looks like you're building some real machines now. Yeah, we're moving into the main machine halls now, so we're stood at the end of the, of the Dorris assembly halls, so there's two machines behind us now that are destined to go uh, back to back into, a, into an FMS system. And what, what's the advantage of these type of machines, what, what, what's the purpose of them? What, what you've got with Dorris is it's a heavy duty vertical turning lathe. So a rotating table and then a bridge and a column. So we can have a single column or a double column machine, we can have a moving bridge and we've got a moving ram. And on the end of the ram we've got a multiple of attachments that can be either turning blocks or milling blocks, angled heads, uh, even grinding attachments we can put onto these machines. Uh, and for customers buying these type of machines, what, what sort of products would they be producing? So normally these are medium to large parts that require a lot of very heavy metal removal rates and very fine finishes and high accuracies. So you've got cast iron structure with hydrostatic guideways, you've got very good um, damping characteristics, very good surface finishes and very high quality components coming off these machines. So are these standard types of machines, Lee, or can they get bigger than this? Well, they get much bigger than this, Mark. We start at 1.4 metres with a single column we finish around 10 metres diameter with a, with a double column machine and we can take table loads of up to about 350 tonnes on these machines. So you've explained how big the machines can actually be produced here at Munch and Gladbach. When you talk about FMS, obviously Industry 4 is a big part of Munch and Gladbach build here and the philosophy of the company. Tell me a little bit more. Well, in, Industry 4 is a topic in itself, it's on everybody's lips at the moment. Starag has a system called IPS, Integrated Production Systems. And that's a part of Industry 4, and where we've got an FMS cell like this, the machines have to communicate together and they have to communicate with other machines or other systems, so we need a control mechanism for that. And we have our own system and we have third-party systems that, that we work with, so we can link our machines with other machines, with other processes, and control them with a, with a central computer system. And when, when customers sort of look at that process, Lee, is it very much down to being flexible for, the, for how they need to produce their product for their customer? It is, and it's about understanding how they want to run their workflow as well. So we can link to their own MRP system and we can run the process control and, and, and understand what machines have availability and tools ready and all that sort of stuff. And we can also look at our own condition monitoring and machine measuring and feedback that information to, so we make sure that the machines are capable and the process is capable and that everything runs together. We give the customers the right reports with the right data that's useful for them as well. So looking at the number of machine builds you've got here, yet again this is something very large but very different. It's very different Mark, this is a, a machine for the, uh, for the aerospace market called an Ecospeed and as you can see from the speed it's moving out, it's a very dynamic machine. We start with a machining centre configuration with a metre table and we go up to machines upwards of 20 metres x-axis stroke. So this one here, whilst it's a large machine, it's sort of in the middle, in the, in the range. And when you look at the head and what it's doing there, I mean obviously it's doing a lot of work, is there a reason for that? Well this is a unique head, it's based on linear drives rather than rotary drives and we're able to very dynamically uh, move, the, move the tool and, and the spindle. So in a corner of an aerospace part, for example, we're not waiting for rotary axes to slow down, we're simply moving up and round. It means we can remove metal very, very quickly in a roughing mode, but we can also be very dynamic when we're finishing, even on very, very big structures. And why is that important to aerospace customers? Cycle time. Everything's about process time. 
So we've got 150 kilowatts in the spindle, so we can produce 12 litres of aluminium in a, a minute when we're roughing, but then we can, we can finish those pockets very quickly. So this machine here, do you go any bigger than uh, what we see here, Lee? Oh yeah, tw 20 metres. And what, what's special about this is the spindle has to be cutting all the time, so we have to manipulate the component, and we can take a 20 metre long component and within a couple of three minutes, we, we can load that component up to the spindle whilst we remove the finished component as well. So the machine keeps running, which is very different to a gantry machine where you have to stop the machine, unload the part, can take hours. And how do you get rid of all that swarf? Well, that, that's, that's the story in itself. What you need there is a very, very efficient um, briquette system or extraction system. We drop the swarf into the floor and we take it outside the building and then our customers have their own systems to get rid of the swarf, but they have to be able to do it efficiently. What we're inside here, Mark, is an Echo Force tie. There's two types of Echo Force. There's an Echo Force, which is a machining centre, single pallet, multi pallet or FMS. And the key attribute to the Echo Force is the fact it's got head change capability. So oil and gas, we load a component, we do all the bottle bore in there the facing all automatically. We then develop the machine for the aerospace market. We stood inside an Echo Force tie. We have two variants. We've got the, the single head variant here where we've got a very heavy duty five axis fork head. And then we have an even heavier duty machine with a head changer where we've got a 5,000 Newton meter spindle for roughing. So first of its kind to my knowledge, and this is where we push the cutting tool people to give us a cutting tool that challenges the machine. And what sort of materials are you cutting on here? For that, for that particular machine, it's, it's targeted for the titanium market. And what you see behind is, is, is a moving table, so we put large titanium monolithic parts on this machine, and the head swivels and tilts to give you your five axis. And does it allow itself to, to be offered outside of uh, aerospace and oil and gas? It could be. It could be, but this, this particular one's for aerospace, the other Echo Force variants for other industries such as the oil and gas. So there's a wide variety of industries that we can support with this product. But it's large, heavy duty machining where you want single setup. And of course, as a strategy at Starag, obviously you're building the spindle and the heads. Always building the spindles and the heads.